Yo yo everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be implementing two of the classes that we have in our utilities folder. Currently we have two classes, one of them is called resolution and the other one is called camera. And these classes are pretty useful. The resolution class is a resolution manager we can use to draw our game window at different sizes. So in the past, here in the game one constructor, we did set the game window resolution. However, if we are running this game on different devices, say we're running it on an iOS phone, or we're running it on a PC that doesn't handle the large resolution that we've set the game window to, we'll need to shrink the size of the window so it can be drawn correctly. The problem with that though is, whenever you shrink the game window, your assets will start being cut off. So let's say we had to shrink the window to be half of 1280 and half of 720. We could do that by changing these numbers here, but it's going to cut off half of the art in our window. And that's not very good. <laughs> that's going to cause a lot of problems, especially if we've designed our game where we expect the player to always see this certain view on screen. So that causes a lot of problems and the resolution manager can easily fix this for us by resizing all of our art with the window size. So what we'll do is we'll tell the resolution manager what our native resolution is. So in our case we've been working on this game in 1280 by 720. So we would tell the resolution manager all of our art is based in that resolution. And then we'll give the resolution manager another resolution that's the one we actually want to draw in. And then based on those two resolutions, the resolution manager will take care of all the calculations to just make our game draw correctly. You don't have to worry about what it's doing under the hood. Um, if you want to, you can, you can look through the code, but I don't think that's necessary. We're just going to plug in that class and get it working. And then after that, we'll plug in the camera that I talked about in the last video that will let us move around in the game world and focus on different things. So first, let's erase these four lines of code where we are setting the resolution earlier. Let's start off by calling resolution.init. This will initialize the resolution manager. It's asking for a graphics device manager and specifically it's asking for a reference to that. See the keyword ref? So whenever it's asking for a ref we start off by saying ref to match that and then we pass in graphics because that's our graphics device manager semicolon at the end. And notice we didn't have to create a new instance of resolution. It's a static class so we have access to it automatically. Next we can set the resolution dot virtual resolution using this function here. And the virtual resolution is the resolution that we're working in. So remember earlier I said we've been basing our game in 1280 by 720. We would type that in here. 1280720. Finally, we would set the resolution we want to draw in. So that's just called set resolution. We could set it at 1280 by 720. We will do that in the end, but for the sake of demonstration, let's set it to something weird. Let's set it to 800, 600 and hopefully we should see the game assets resize to fit this new window. Oh, and there's one other parameter at the end. Do we want the window to be full screen or not? I'm going to say keep it windowed, so I'll pass in false. Now we need to actually plug all of this stuff in to how we're drawing our game. So first let's go down to the draw function and right after we clear the screen to that cornflower blue color let's call resolution dot begin draw and this tells the resolution manager that we're about to start drawing for this frame and then next we need to tell the sprite batch that we're using this resolution manager so inside the resolution class there is a matrix and a matrix is basically a big grid of numbers that stores information for how we want the game world to look All right. So it would hold position data, it could hold rotation data, it could hold a bunch of information for how we want to view the world. 
I don't want to go too much into depth on that because you don't need to really understand the math to make this work. So uh, let's just go ahead and plug that in. See, right here there's a function called get transformation matrix, and this returns a matrix we can use in Sprite Batch. So in Sprite Batch.begin, we have some different parameters we can throw in here to customize how we draw. We already have the first two set here, but as you can see, there's some more options. For the sampler state, let's just use sampler state dot linear clamp. That's a default setting we can use. For the depth stencil state, we'll say default. For the rasterizer state, we'll pass in col none. For the effect, we'll pass in nothing, null. And then finally, for this transformation matrix, this is the matrix that will transform how we are drawing the art. So we want to pass in resolution dot get transformation matrix. Now, don't worry about these other things. Basically, we're just passing in the default settings for sprite batch dot begin. Don't worry about what they're doing. You don't really need to know. The important thing is this resolution matrix here. While we're at it, let's copy this entire sprite batch dot begin line and let's go back to our game hud.cs class. And here we are also calling sprite batch dot begin. Let's replace this line with our new way of calling sprite batch dot begin. That way the game hud stuff is being scaled with the resolution matrix as well. Now we can return to game1.cs and let's press F5 and see what happens. All right, so it's working correctly. Notice that we now have a smaller game window, that's 800 by 600, and notice that the resolution manager has letterboxed, which that's the terminology for putting black bars above and below the screen. If the resolution manager can perfectly scale all of our art into the new game window, it will do it. But if we start using these wonky resolutions, like 800 by 600, that's more square, it will have to basically add in these black boxes to make it be positioned correctly, okay? So sometimes you have to deal with that. Um, but it's still better than <laughs> not seeing half of the screen, right? Um, so this is very useful if in the future you all start making a iOS version, which by the way, I can't remember if I've clarified this, but the code that we write in the series, you can use this to make iOS games, Xbox One games, PlayStation 4 games, all types of platforms can be targeted using the same exact code we're writing here. So if you do end up going to those platforms, or like I said, you're running it on a PC that can't handle a bigger resolution, this resolution manager will really save the day. Let's go ahead and exit out. I'm going to set the working, or I'm sorry, I'm going to set the uh, resolution we draw at back to 1280 by 720. So next, I'd like to implement a camera. And if you've played a game, you know how cameras work. Usually they follow the player. The player will be in the center of the camera, and as the player walks around, the camera will move and follow the player. So this lets us have a bigger game world than just this one screen we've been working in. In the future, you can make your game level as large as you want. Using this camera, you can move around. If you don't like the camera, you don't want the camera to move, you want to lock it in a specific place, there's an ability to lock the camera. If you type in uh, camera dot update x-axis or update y-axis, you can set these both to false, but we won't do that for now. But yeah, notice that camera is also a static class, just like resolution, so we're all ready to start implementing the camera. The first thing that we want to do is initialize it. So down here under base.initialize, let's call camera.initialize. And next we need to update the camera. We need to tell at each frame where is the position you should be focusing on. And usually that's the player. So we'll just take the player's position and pass that into the camera's update function. I'd actually like to make a helper function for this called update camera. So I'm going to go down here at the very bottom. And this will be a private void called update camera. 
if we have no objects currently in our list, we do not want to update the camera because we have nothing to follow. All right? So we'll just immediately return from this function if that's true. And then finally, we'll just call camera.update, passing in the first object in the list, which is always the player, right? Passing in the player's position. Cool. Now we can call update camera. I'm going to call it up here, right underneath the map update. But now we need a way to draw with this camera. And just like how we plugged in the resolution matrix into the sprite batch shot begin, camera also has a matrix right here. It has a similar function called get transform matrix. We can plug that into the sprite batch begin call and the sprite batch will automatically draw with the camera. <laughs> All right, that's pretty simple. Um, there is one thing I want to point out though, and that is that we, we technically have two matrices. We have the resolution matrix and the camera matrix. If we're wanting to use both of them, we would need to combine them. All right? And luckily, if you go through in the camera class that I wrote, um, let's see here. In this function called calculate matrix and rectangle, you never have to call this, don't worry about it, but I'm just showing you. In this function, I multiply the camera's transform matrix by the resolution's transform matrix. So I am already taking care of that combination for you. So keep that in mind. Whenever we call camera.getTransformMatrix, it's actually the camera matrix combined with the resolution matrix. All right? So let's exit out and go down to the sprite batch.begin in game1.cs. And instead of calling the resolution.getTransformMatrix, we will call camera.getTransformMatrix. We will keep the gamehud.begin or I'm sorry, the game HUD's sprite batch dot begin call, we will keep that just using the resolution matrix. Because remember earlier in the last video, I went on that spiel about how the game HUD should always be fixed on the window and it shouldn't be affected by the game world. Because if we, we don't want the uh, scoreboard to move with the camera, we just want it to stay fixed in the top left corner. So we won't use any camera stuff here because it doesn't need it, right? It's just drawing on top of the window no matter where the camera is. So that's fine, and we've plugged in the camera into our game, uh, our game's sprite batch dot begin. So let's press F5 and see what happens. All right, so the game has started. I'm going to move around, and notice we have a camera <laughs> that's now moving, and it's focusing on the player. So if I walk over here to the left now, notice we see this big black abyss to the left, Maybe you don't like that, but in the future, I imagine we're going to fill that in with more things in our level. If you go to the right, it's the same thing. Eventually, we can walk off and fall into the great abyss and never return. All right. Cool. I'm going to exit out. And I'd like to go to this update function here, and I want to just show you some other things that the camera has. So inside of the camera, we have a look at function, and that will immediately set the camera to whatever position you pass in. So let's say you've moved the player to the middle of your level, and he was just at the left side of the level. If, it's, if he's moving really suddenly like that, the camera will take a little bit to catch up with that. So you could immediately snap the camera using this function. We also have a rotation <laughs> variable. And you can actually rotate the camera using this. We'll do that in just a second. There's also a screen rectangle right here, and you can use the screen rectangle to determine what objects are currently being seen on the camera. It's a rectangle, just like how we use rectangles for bounding boxes. So you can easily pass this into all the check collision functions that we've written for the characters. If you detect a collision between the camera's screen rect and a player or character's bounding box, you know that that game object is currently being seen by the camera. 
the screen rectangle will automatically update. You don't have to worry about doing all that stuff. It's handled whenever you call camera.update. Uh, and then like I said earlier, you have the update X and Y axis. So if you want to lock your camera and not make it move with the player, you could set those both to false. And here we have a zoom variable, and that lets you zoom in or zoom out. Uh, let's start with playing with the rotation. So I'm just going to say camera.rotation plus equals 0.1f. And let's see what that does. <laughs> okay, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> but but you see the effect, right? We're rotating the entire camera. So everything the camera's looking at, that view is being rotated really crazy to the right. And maybe you have some type of gameplay reason to do this. We don't have a reason right now, so I'm going to exit out. And let's also check out the zoom. So I'm going to say camera.zoom plus equals 0.01f. That way it doesn't zoom in super fast. Hopefully it's kind of slower. All right, and then see we started the game and we're zooming in really close <laughs> onto that uh, building there. Isn't that cool? So just wanted to show you some of the additional functionality that's in this thing. Um, I did write some of it myself, but I actually, uh, there was a guy on the internet his name right here was David Amador, and he also had, hopefully I pronounced his name right, and he also had some help here from this guy. I think he left a comment. So these people were nice enough to put some of this code online for anyone to use. I took it and I expanded on it just a little bit with some stuff I thought it needed. Um, same with the resolution manager. That was something that someone put online for everyone to use. So th shout out and thank yous to everyone that did that and contributed and yeah that's it simple video but the camera and resolution manager are very powerful tools that I imagine you'll want to use in the future so thanks for watching I hope you thought that was cool and you can see some uses for these new uh, features and I'll see you all on the next video